Hmm. Yo, what's up? Hey, uh, you ever hear the name Thomas Messick? Uh, I think it sounds familiar. Why? He's a missing person dude. Uh, went, went missing in 2015, just hunting with his friends. Totally disappeared. I thought it might be something we could look into. I mean, yeah, I'm okay. good. Alright, why don't you head over here and I can give you the details in person. Sounds good. See you in a bit. Alright, cool. Do you ever drive normally? Look at the car. You're gonna tell I, me I that if you had a car, I like understand this, you drive the car. If you had a car like this, would you ever drive it normally? Fair enough. You, you do realize it's 80 degrees. When you said the thing about the case, I figured, you know. Yes, yes, Dad's on hunting trip. I get, I understand the reference. I, you're still ridiculous, though. Oh, I'm aware. Oh, as long as you're okay with it. First time I've ever had waffles outside of uh, Pennsylvania. It's a weird statistic to have. Why? I don't know, it just occurred to me. Like every time I've gone to Uncle Bill's, yeah. I've always gotten pancakes. Uh, Uncle Bill's. Is that like a chain? Yeah, down in uh, South Jersey. Oh, right, right, right. Short. Wait, uh, Actually, I might have had waffles on Uncle Bill's. <laughs> So do me a favor and remind me like exactly what this case is about because considering we talk about a lot of them, I'm a little bit lost in the sauce at the moment. So the basic gist of this is that Tom Messick, who's an 82-year-old veteran, was out on a hunting trip with his family. So to give you an idea of who Tom Messick is, the guy was uh, half blind, half deaf, and mobile, but not to the extent that he could actually really get around on his own. He could walk, but the guy wouldn't be capable of doing a several mile hike in the woods. So, what? If he was half blind, half deaf, and like was not capable of doing a several mile hike in the woods, what the hell was he doing out there? So for the last 55 years, up until this point, they had gone hunting in this area every year. It was just kind of a family tradition at that point, you know? So he and his sons and several family friends would go out to Brant Lake. They're from Troy, New York, which is near where we are right now in Albany. Is it Albany or Albany? I think it's Albany. I've heard both. I don't, I don't know. At least it's not Ohio. To be fair, having just been in Ohio a week ago, not horrible. I will never forgive Ohio. What did they do to you? You know we don't speak of that. Fair enough. So, considering the amount of time that Tom and his family had spent hunting this area, it doesn't really, they, they weren't really thinking about it as anything special, but there was this one spot out by Brant Lake, New York, that they hadn't hunted before, which was called Lily Pond. So, it's about a two-mile drive off of the actual spot, and on November 15th, 2015, Tom and his family members and their friends drove up and decided they were going to set up shop hunting. So, what they did was they spread out in a line, the older guys, the four older guys, who were all around Tom's age, senior citizens, not mobile enough to really be out and about hunting, but to the point where if their kids were there, they could make it work. Because what the kids went and did, and when I say kids, I mean, you know, 30s and 40s, they went out and went around a big hill, and their plan was to wait for any deer to come and then push the deer towards Tom and the other older men who were spread out at 100 yard intervals. So Tom was on the far end, uh, closest to the, the exit road from where they were. And they were going to wait on the other side of the hill. If they saw any game, they were going to push it towards the older men, and then the older men would actually take the shots. Now, Tom was blind in one eye. He had another good eye, and you don't need depth perception to aim down a scope. I will say, and obviously there's no guarantee to this or anything like that, but uh, just based off of like 
hunting style or like you know safety patterns in terms of hunting and things like that having one group of people pointing rifles downrange and another group of people that are pushing a deer up that you're going to be shooting at does not sound like the best method from a safety perspective i am not a hunter but to my understanding the idea was that the hill would prevent them from actually shooting each other because they, they, the, the parabolic arc of a bullet just is not going to make it over a hill it's going to go way further than that i uh, also one of the methods i they were using as far as i'm aware is that uh, when somebody would go missing, they needed to find them. I guess hunters fire three shots into the air, which I don't think you're supposed to do, but I don't know, maybe I'm getting it wrong. It's three shots at the ground, but the point of the matter is they got out there at 10 a.m., which is pretty late to start hunting. Usually people are going out at like five to set up. So that when six and seven roll around, when the, when the morning, when the dawn comes, they're actually already set up, they're already ready to go. But the way that this trip went, that is not what they saw. Because they drove down this road, the access road to get to where they were going. They had never hunted this area before, but they would hunted the area around it. And they set up shop, 10 a.m., pretty late. Mm. But even at 10 a.m., you know, there's still going to be animals out and about making noise, rustling in the brush. What they reported was that over the course of the six or six or so hours they were out there, they did not hear a thing. They did not see any deer, didn't see any squirrels, no birds, no rustling of small animals in the brush. Complete, total silence. So as we know, considering places when everything goes silent in the woods, not a great sign. Even just with your typical apex predator, yeah, if the woods go quiet, you're probably no longer the baddest thing in the forest, and it's good to hop out of there. But again, they were experienced. They weren't really thinking about it as an issue. There were seven of them. It's just How not. Doing? Good doing good up on yourself. Uh, I was going to say more coffee, but I still have a good amount, so thanks. But as I was saying, there were seven of them. They all had rifles. Not really the point at which you're concerned about wild animals because you've got enough people and we're not in an area that's known for having like grizzly bears or anything like that. Grizzly bears, not necessarily black bears, different story, but you know, they're tiny enough and they get scared enough that it's not a huge deal, so. Yeah, the thing about black bears is that black bears are kind of more afraid of you than you are of them. If you shoot a gun, they're gonna run away. A grizzly might actually take the shot and keep coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th th that's my point though, is that you're not gonna, they're, they're not really around other apex predators that we know of. So they're out there from about 10 a.m. to 2.30 or 3.30 p.m. And around 2.30 to 3.30 is when they noticed that Tom was missing because they all communicated over their walkie-talkies and said, you know, all right, there's clearly nothing here. Let's head back to the campsite and hang out around there, which was actually over at Brant Lake, two miles away. And this was only a 12-minute drive down this road. So it's not, we're not talking about like an extreme distance here. It's not a difficult trail. It's just a quick drive down a dirt road. Mm. So they get up there, and they get back to the car, to the truck, and Tom's not there. To my understanding, Tom had not responded to the call. It was just kind of a general assent. They didn't really notice that he didn't say yes. They got back to the truck, no Tom. They think, all right, maybe he didn't hear us. Again, half dead. So they walk over to where Tom is supposed to be. Tom's not there. This is very odd because a hundred yards is not that far. So the guy who was to his right should have, if he yelled, if he shouted for help, anything like that, should have heard him. Also, they all had walkie-talkies, so even if they couldn't hear each other and they needed to communicate, they could communicate. It wouldn't have been a problem. So nobody heard anything, nobody saw anything, there was no communication over the walkie-talkie, they just noticed that Tom was gone. The only thing anybody heard distinctly was a sound that most of the people involved said they couldn't really place. One guy said it sounded kind of like a car door slamming, but the thing is, because of the area they were in and how quiet it was, if a car had driven up just a hundred yards from that nearest guy to Tom, they would have heard it. Speaking of cars driving up, uh, are these dirt roads? Yes, these are dirt roads. We probably should have taken the Jeep. This should be fun.
mean, yeah, it's gorgeous. But when you think about the actual mystery of what we're dealing with and and the implication that for this guy to go missing in the way that he did, it would have to be uh, either a conspiracy and a, a murder or something out there took him. Yeah, yeah, murder or, or some form of like manslaughter or whatever, but yeah, because it's, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty populated place. It's surprising, I'm surprised by how many houses I'm seeing. Yeah. I thought this was going to be a much smaller community. Is there like a town center anywhere? Uh, I don't think so. That's kind of weird. A little bit. I think we drove through it. I think it was where the post office was. Yeah, it's not much of a town. Not really. It's kind of a village. Yeah. That's it? Yeah? Uh, according to the map, that's it. So, Tom Messick and his buddies were two miles down that dirt road when he went missing. It doesn't look like it's a private road, but it's also a completely unmarked road. What do you think? Uh, it's weird. I mean, obviously we can't drive up of it, up it because of the limitations of the vehicle in which we're in, but it's just weird. I wanted to take the Jeep. Yeah, well, we would have gotten here about an hour and a half after we did if we took the Jeep. In this episode of the Lore Lodge, Aiden admits to speeding. I'm good at what I do. What he does is break the wall. I approve. <laughs> I mean, the entire area is beautiful. It's fascinating. But how the hell did we get down there? So what's our game planner? I fucking hate bugs so much. I told you, that's why I know, I know. you said you're like, I know, oh, why, I know. why would anybody want a vacation at the beach and sit up here? It's so nice. That's why. I forgot about the box. Yeah, clearly. Let's go to the Poconos a lot as a kid. Valid. So what's our plan of attack here? Well, the part I did not anticipate is exactly how difficult to enter that road is, Lily yeah. Pond Road. And as we know, that is the exact spot where Tom went missing. Now. I don't necessarily think that there's a huge difference in terms of time and space between where he went missing and where we currently are. Yeah. So my my main concern here is I don't want to, you know, say that we're where he went missing and then be kind of lying to people. Yeah. But at the same that. time, it's really quiet. Yeah. I hear birds, but not close. No, oh, from the trees and stuff. I mean, the occasional person driving by. Yeah. See, part of what was mentioned with the case when Tom went missing was exactly how quiet it was in the woods. And from what the people that were with him said, mm. it wasn't quiet like this. It was quiet like no birds. Nothing at all. Yeah. And I mean, if, if there was a mundane, natural reason for what happened, you know, he was kidnapped or murdered or something, you know, there's, there's nothing to be said for that. But if you look at where we are and you think about the Native American folklore related to the region, we're in prime territory for something like the Wendigo. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the circumstances of Tom's disappearance, I mean, nobody heard anything. And there was no trace of him. Everything he was carrying was gone too. That's the part that bugs me even more is if this was a wild animal attack, yeah. then his stuff would have been everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. You know, there would have been a sign of a struggle. There would have been a trail of blood probably. You would assume that he would have, unless he was taken completely by surprise, that he would have at least tried to fire a shot or something. Yeah. And even if he was taken by surprise, I mean, other than it would have had, I mean, you would have heard, considering they weren't that far from him, and I mean, the largest predators that we have to worry about here are, you know, black bears or, I mean, I don't know if moose are down here. 
as compared to Canada. I wouldn't be surprised if they are. But even still, you'd hear something. Elk. 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 Well, yeah. No, elk's more out west, isn't it? I think you get elk this far east. Really? Well, considering Elk Mountain is about two hours from here. Yeah, well, um, but even still, I mean, those aren't necessarily predators. I mean, you know, moose are pretty territorial, but... I want to try something. Huh. One of the things that was pointed out is that the closest person to him was 100 yards away. And people have said that, well, even if he had screamed, nobody would hurt him. Yeah. I don't know, 100 yards into those woods and scream at you. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Oh yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Yes, that's not an option. I can also see you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah, I can hear you perfectly clear. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. I mean, was the definitive distance 100 yards? Yeah, that, that makes no sense whatsoever, because I can see you as well. Like, you're behind, you're, you're behind some stuff, but wave your arms around. Yeah, yeah, I can see your arms moving plain and clear. Yeah. This is what? Yeah, it is conversational, yeah. I mean, I, I'm still yelling a little bit. Let me talk a little bit more at a normal volume. Can you hear this properly? Yeah, I can still hear you too. Yeah? We have a theory. I had a theory. What's up? About a possible mundane explanation, which I will admit there are some flaws with because they already looked into this. But as I was running up, probably about 20 yards in, my foot sank about to here into the mud. And I had to dig it out. I don't know how deep the mud goes, but if you wanted to get rid of some stuff, make it really hard to find, there's a mosquito on me. If you want to get rid of some stuff and make it really hard to find, you might be able to push, you know, at the very least, his weapons and clothes. You could push into that mud. I don't think anybody would ever find it. Unless they were actually like digging through the mud. And alternatively, you might be able to get a body in there. Hmm. What I was trying to say is that theoretically you might be able to actually get a body in there. And I don't know if that mud is over at Lily Pond Road and I want to go try and check it out and see. But at the very least, if, if it was murder, if somebody did, try, did kill Tom and try and hide his body... Which, again, he was half deaf so, and half blind. So if you approached him on the side that he couldn't hear very well, you might be able to get the jump on him. Although it was really quiet, so you'd have to be completely silent to pull that off. Uh, well, thoughts on this theory? Potentially that because they were kind of creating a crossfire scenario, mm -hmm. that he may have gotten shot accidentally and they didn't want to deal with the consequences, so they hit his body. They didn't fire at all. But I mean, and, I mean, think about it. You can hear me talking conversationally. Yeah, but my point is, is that they didn't fire according to them. Well, no, that's my point. Is that if somebody had gotten shot, mm -hmm. you would have heard that gunshot. We're two miles away. We're over two miles away. Yeah. If somebody fired a gun, you'd hear it. Especially because we're in a valley. There's mountains all over the place. It would echo off of everything. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine that... But and I mean, also how... the way they talked about it being set up, and this is why I wanted to get to actual the spot, yeah, is because I want to see what the hill they were dealing with was. The the graphic I've seen of it, and if you look at it on on like maps, mm. the elevation is 
too high, there's no way that if people were on separate sides of that hill, yep. they'd be able to shoot each other. So that's why I don't buy the idea that there was an accidental shooting. Also, shooting somebody leaves casings and... Yeah, but like you said, you can just push... If you can push a body into the, blood, into the mud, yeah. you can shoot a, put a casing in. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but at the same time, the issue with that is that the, the police found no motive. Again, so accidental would, shooting. I guess it's possible, but... And I mean, they noticed he went missing between 2 and 2.30 and 3.30, and then at 4.30 they reported it, but that could just be that it took them that long to get back. Yeah, and also, like... And they spent some time searching for him at first, according to them. But obviously, but the thing is, if it was an accidental shooting and they were all trying to cover it up, you can't believe any of that story. True, but... I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't buy the accidental shoot. Cause think about it. Like, I was only a hundred yards in there. Mm -hmm. They were much further separated than that. Yeah. They were. They were half a mile apart. So, I mean, if I had gone another three hundred yards, four hundred yards in there. But it might have been somebody in the older gentleman group. They wouldn't have been shooting that direction. Because think about it, if what, what you're thinking, what you're looking at is like you and me, imagine that we're currently 100 yards apart. Yep. We're both looking that way. Yep. There's no way you accidentally shoot somebody 90 degrees to your left, especially when you're an experienced hunter. That's if fair. If this was like novice hunters going out and, and running it, I can see it maybe. Yep. But I, I mean, we're talking about guys with over 55 years of experience mm. hunting you know, uh, people who are in the military, I just, I don't see an accidental shooting being the cause of this. I only see a purposeful shooting being a possibility and then the effort to hide the body, but there's no motive. There's no cause. Tom didn't have a lot of money. His family loved him. Nobody could think of any reason why anybody would have wanted to hurt him. Mm. And I mean, think about like, that all, all six of the people with him would have had to been be in on it. It would have had to be that nobody talked at all. So yeah, I reiterate, what's our, uh, what's our plan of attack here? I think we try and get as close to Lily Pond Road as we can, and then maybe hike it, see at what point things start to feel off, if they, at, if they even do. That's all I can really think of, you know? I mean, let's, uh, if we look around, I mean, this entire place is just mountains and trees. I just can't imagine looking around as we are. How you, how that could have happened, you know? Yeah. And it, it is such a, a beautiful place. Like, this is a genuinely beautiful area. It's, it genuinely is hard to, like, contemplate this happening to somebody. Here. Yeah. And it's such a small community, you know. Accidental shooting is the only thing that makes sense for human involvement because, again, there's no motive. But at the same time, based on the the geography, it doesn't seem likely that that would have happened. Now, they, again, they could have been lying about the geography. They would all have had to lie the exact same story. It just there's there's too many confounding variables that like I can understand why that isn't a, a route that they would explore because there's absolutely no way to prove it. And the other thing is, you know, ha had they had they dumped the body in the woods, it would have been found during the search. Unless it was buried in the mud. But again, we haven't actually gotten over to that part of the area to figure out if it was if it's that muddy. I mean, it definitely was muddy enough for my foot to sink. You know how there's that joke about, I always thought quicksand was going to be a bigger deal? Yeah. It was kind of that moment I was like, oh, this this is this is quicksand. I am sinking. <laughs> I don't think it was actually quicksand. It was probably mud. 
but it was very soft mud. There's definitely an underground stream running through there at one point, and then uh, an above ground stream too. I'll tell you what, not only is it beautiful up here, but it reminds me a lot of Colorado and Oregon up here. I can see it. I've never been to either of those places, but... It's, but it's surprising because it's not... Like, Colorado obviously has much steeper mountains, but, like, the valley areas and things like that remind me very much of places like that in Colorado. Right. I mean, this farm stand right here... It's close enough that we could probably walk from there to the entrance. But there was that one woman. I want to ask her if she's still out there. If she knows if it's a private road and if she knows anywhere that we could park to take a quick hike down it. Yep. Because, I mean, I feel like the, the only way we're truly going to get an idea of how plausible an accident like that was is if we actually get down there. That's the road kind of like right here, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, it's coming up on the left. It's right there. Right. And she's not still out there. I mean, at the end of the day, what we have done is gotten an idea of the geography, even if we're not in the exact same spot. Yep. Basically everything around here is probably going to look that way. I was not able to find any evidence of things like abandoned mine shafts. I'm sure there's caves. So, it's, you know, what, what I'm... And in case it's not clear, what I'm trying to do here is determine if there is a natural explanation. Because that's what we always try to do here at the Lore Lodge is, you know, is there a, is there a natural explanation for this case of somebody going missing or of a body being found anything along those lines because if there is then we want to get that to the police and we want to help them with their investigation because you know oh we found this maybe you know the more sets of eyes you have looking over something the more likely it is that you're going to find stuff that people missed but we're seven years on i can't imagine we're going to find any physical evidence of anything and the police didn't find any physical evidence of anything and this is one of the most intensive well-designed searches that that I've ever heard of in terms of the way it was set up with the bump lines and everything. So it, the, the way that this kind of goes down is that if anyone had made a mistake, either intentionally killing him and hiding the body or accidentally killing him and hiding the body, if anybody had made a mistake, it probably would have been discovered because of the way the search was set up with those, those lines of string every few feet. I just don't see a natural explanation based on what I've been able to, to see as we've been up here. And we'll have to include a, a topography map so you can actually see what I mean about it being very unlikely that they would set up a situation where they could accidentally shoot each other. Especially because that would require seven experienced hunters making a rookie mistake, which just doesn't, doesn't track for me. So, so the only thing that comes to mind is, you know, what about paranormal explanations? And that leaves the two primary candidates in this case, which are the, the dimensional rifts that we've talked about, where obviously the Native Americans, the Celts, the Norse, all these different groups had the belief that you could slip into an alternate dimension through certain spots. And maybe, you know, Tom fell into something and ended up in another plane of existence. Or it's also the feasible explanation that there is the, the Wendigo being an option. I mean, we, that's, that's kind of what we got started about with this whole channel is these disappearances all match the profile of this specific Native American legend, this Algonquin legend of a creature that hides out in the forests and comes and grabs you. And when you look at Tom's disappearance, the, the timing, the, the Wendigo historically, traditionally, is most active in the colder months. So November, December, January, February, March would be the time period. This was in November, November 15th. I just, I... I can't think of a rational explanation, and that only leaves the irrational, the supernatural explanations. I just, I don't know what to make about it. What, what about you? 
Um, yeah, I think in terms of explanations, uh, you know, the... I think in terms of explanations, the rational are limited in the sense of... I think the accidental shooting thing makes more sense than murder. Yeah. Because I just can't imagine why a group of people would want to kill someone in their early 80s. It just doesn't make sense. No, I mean, I'm sure there are reasons that you could think of to some extent, but I just, it's, it's, it, it sounds less plausible to me. And also, it's just like, the idea of, I, it, so that's the problem, is that the idea of a group of people trying to cover up a mistake makes a lot more sense to me than a premeditated murder, obviously. But the problem is, is that, like you said, there are a lot of variables specifically in terms of being able to tell the same story and, you know, enough to evade one of the most intensive missing persons investigations that at least you're aware of. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, given your history in researching these things, I would take as, you know, pretty impressive. So, being the resident skeptic on the channel, <laughs> uh, it does seem like the unusual explanations are more likely here, which is weird for me to say. But just because the amount of rational explanations that you could suggest and the amount of flaws within those very few suggestions that exist, um, it starts to open up the idea that something unusual and generally unexplained by most may have occurred here. It's just, and also on top of that, when you think about it, there's the fact that where, where we are right now, I did not see a local police department, which would make sense for an area with a population of less than 5,000. You, you rarely have actual local police handle that kind of thing. Um, and I spoke to uh, a lieutenant from the Warren County Sheriff's Department. They were not in charge of the search. The Forest Service was. When I reached out to the Forest Service, I didn't get anything. When I reached out to the FBI, I didn't get anything. When I reached out to the state police, I didn't get anything. They all refused to comment. The county sheriff was willing to talk, but did not actually give me anything. So I just, I, I have a hard time. That that does stick out to me, that there's there, there's possibilities there. But what, I, what I'm trying to say here is like, if you accidentally shoot an 82 year old on a hunting trip, the likelihood that you're going to actually see charges, it, it just doesn't, doesn't fit for me. I mean, that's, that is such an obvious accident that there's no way you could, it, that's not, that's not negligence, you know, and in order to get charged with manslaughter, there's got to be negligence. I, and again, I'm not a lawyer, but like, as I'm thinking about it, you know, if I, if I were the county sheriff, and someone came to me and said, hey, we accidentally shot our friend on a hunting trip. I can't imagine you press charges. And, and the other thing is, like I said, the, the state cops wouldn't talk to us. The FBI wouldn't talk to us. The state forest service wouldn't talk to us. So why, why is that? You know, and I'm, I'm not, I am not saying for any, in, in, with any degree of certainty that there's some sort of conspiracy or cover up, but it's very odd to me that in a situation like this, where you've done the, the research and you've done the, the, the due diligence to try and uncover what happened here, that you'd be unwilling to speak to, you know, investigators and documentarians who are doing something like this. I don't know, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm at a loss with this one. And it is one of those situations where I, I like, I genuinely enjoy getting to look into a case that seems supernatural and coming to the conclusion that, oh, this, this clearly has a natural explanation. That's not what we're looking at here. 
so what's left you know it's either either he slipped into something that made him go missing or he was taken by something and with the bump lines the thing is if he'd gone miss if he had like fallen into mud or a cave or anything along those lines they would have found him like he has to have wandered off he had some in some way he has to have either slipped out of our reality or been brought somewhere by someone or something and that someone or something would have had to take him completely unaware to the point where he was not able to call out for help or fire a shot and I just can't I, I can't wrap my head around what that could be you know It's also strange. I want to see if we can find someone to talk to about it. How do we want to do that? Well, what time's the post office open until on Saturday? Good question. Let's go check it out. It's right there. Uh, if you want to park over there, I'm going to head in this little store right here. Basic info, uh, my name is Aiden Mattis. I'm with a channel called The Lore Lodge. Uh, we do a lot of missing 411, missing person style documentary stuff. And we obviously did all the research with the state police reports and all that stuff. What we're trying to figure out is if there's anything that's not in those reports. Because we reached out to the state police, the Forest Service, and the FBI. The only people who talked to us were the Warren County Sheriff's Department. And what we were wondering is if you guys, as residents and business owners in the area, if you remember anything about the case, if you took part in the search at all. Um, I didn't take part in the search. I know the area where he came up missing. Yeah, we couldn't get down um, the road. Is the gate closed? No, it's that uh, my buddy decided that we should take the Camaro instead of the Jeep. Yeah, so you're not getting in there with the Camaro. No, um, and there's nowhere to park on the side of the road. So, so I know the story behind it as far as he was in there hunting with some mm -hmm. other folks some family members or whatever and they went to look for him on his watch mm -hmm. and they never found him yeah um this is my partner Aiden. Oh, he's also Aiden. Yeah, <laughs> so where was it so they did the this huge search for like weeks mm -hmm. they searched for him every day um nothing ever found of him my opinion on it, knowing that area, is he was never there. All right. And why is that? Why is that? The guy was an expert in survival. Mm -hmm. He taught survival classes. Mm -hmm. Not a candy wrapper, not a footprint, right. not a leaf disturbed. He was never there. That's one that I've never heard. Did, did, you, know, did you know him at all? No. All right. But I've also heard a story that his brother came up missing the same way 10 years prior to it. Really? I I don't know if it's true. It's Yeah, we can we can look into it. But, yeah. Um I know the FBI doesn't say anything about it. Right. There was a couple here from West Virginia last year that actually were doing kind of the same thing you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. Um FBI wouldn't talk to them either. The state police wouldn't talk to them. Um, only a couple of the family members would talk to them. 
we couldn't even find their information to reach out to them. Yeah. So like, the story I was told mm -hmm. could be hearsay, could be fact, could be total fiction. His brother came up missing, hunting with the same group of people ten years prior. So are the two of them kicked back in the Bahamas somewhere? Out of my eye, right. who knows? Interesting. But, but I know there was no trace of him found in there. Yeah, that's they the part that's been bugging us. They didn't find any clothes. Listen, the guy's a survivalist. He knows, even at 80-something years old, yeah, he had a bad year, he had bad hair. 82. Hearing. Okay, 82 yeah. years old. He knows, I'm going hunting. I'm bringing a couple of power bars, candy bar, bottle mm -hmm. of water, you know, matches, normal hunting gear for yeah. anybody. You know, your normal side gear. And they found nothing. Nothing at all. You know, here's been the, the rumor of, oh, Sasquatch snatched him up. So the area where he was Wrong hunting. Wrong area for Sasquatch anyway. <laughs> yeah. the, the area he was hunting, there used to be a sawmill in that area. Uh-huh. There's a huge sawdust pile mm -hmm. buried under 70 years of leaves and foliage and whatever. Right. So I know from hunting that area, I grew up here my entire life. So you, you've hunted in that area? I've hunted that entire area. I've mm -hmm. hunted from here to Lake George through Hay area. Gotcha. Grew up hunting all of that. I still travel back in there and fish. Mm -hmm. I know that that sawdust pile, I know what happens to sawdust over time. It becomes a sponge. Yeah, it rots. If he'd have walked out onto that, he could have sunk down into it. Mm -hmm. But you would have saw some sign where the leaves were disturbed. They found nothing. Yeah. To, to my knowledge, they found absolutely no trace of him. Mm -hmm. I don't believe he was ever in there. I mean, we didn't even consider that possibility, but yeah, no, it, it does make sense. Do you by chance know what his brother's name was? At the I don't. Okay. Well, I'm sure I can the, figure it the out. The folks that were here doing a story on him that were from West Virginia, mm -hmm. I don't remember their names. They actually talked to his wife. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and they said that she seemed remorseless, that he was missing. How long ago was this? This was last, about this time last summer they were All here. Right. Okay. You know, the one um, she could have come to grips with it. Older husband and wife yeah. couple, they, they do kind of the same thing. They just travel around and do unsolved mystery kind of yeah. stuff, yeah. you know. All right. Wow. That's... Uh, the one the one thing that gets mentioned a lot, and uh, specifically in the, the Missing 411 documentary, I don't know if you've seen it, but Missing 411 The Hunted, they talk about this specific case. It's the first one they talk about. Yeah, I've seen that. It's a little sensational. Um, one of the things that gets mentioned is that there's no, th they said they didn't hear anything at all. They didn't see any deer, they didn't see any squirrels, didn't hear birds. It was just wind rustling through the trees and that was it. Is that something that you've ever experienced out there? No. I mean, I don't believe that. You walk in the woods anywhere yeah. around here. I grew up in these woods. Like, I, I, I haven't hunted in years, mm -hmm. but growing up, my whole family was hunters. Yeah. Fishermen. Trappers. Mm -hmm. You don't go in the woods in the Adirondacks and not hear a bird, a squirrel, or something. You yeah, might we, not see them. I, I was up there in the woods. You're at least going to hear them. I, I went a couple hundred yards in, not that far, but, I mean, it was... So there were you, birds. You can <laughs> drive that road that you guys were on. Yeah. You can drive all the way to Lily Pond mm -hmm. to a, a boat launch area. He wasn't And it's not a private back. road. No, that's that's a, a county road. Gotcha. Uh, it's seasonal and maintained. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. Um, they actually had some prisoners from one of the prisons here 10 years ago, 15 years ago, doing a bunch of work on that road. Oh, wow. You know, oh, wow. You know, they, they kind of do that for some of the trail areas. Gotcha. Like keep that in there. Yeah. 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 Probably get the prisoner some money for it too. Yeah. All right, well um, that's uh But I personally and I know other people in this area that believe he was never in there. Mm -hmm. You know. Are there any theories as to what might have been the alternative? Um that depends. I mean P people around here well, I have theories. I have theories, yeah. Um, I have there, there's two theories that I think about. Either him and his brother are sitting somewhere as in the Bahamas or Mexico, mm -hmm. you know, just hanging, hanging out yeah. for whatever reasons people want to completely disappear for it. Or he was murdered somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe he's ever in there. I guess that's one thing we didn't consider is that 
he could have been killed not in the woods. Yeah. And they could have used that as a cover up. Yeah, right. You're gonna find a boot print. Yeah. In the fall hunting hunting season, the woods are wet around here. And that was another thing that stuck out to me is I was I was up in those woods uh, about three miles that way and I hit a spot where my foot just sunk. Like yeah. I thankfully I noticed it didn't get my whole leg, but as you can see, like yeah. my foot went down to there. So the camera to see my foot went down to there um yeah so i mean like and I, you know i grew up uh going up in northeastern pa like you know a couple times a year we're from philly and stuff. yeah and i mean you know you can't walk through woods without being some form of tracks so. yeah right right so. and like i said the guy's the guy's an expert in the wilderness mm. taught classes on it for years mm. on how to survive in the wild yeah you're gonna find something you're gonna find a piece of clothing that he left for a marker for somebody to find, or you're gonna find a candy bar wrapper or a, you know, a water bottle, something, something where he bedded down that night, the first night. After, because of his age, I'm sure he's on some medications. Probably. Um, after the first two nights, I'd say he didn't have much of a chance to live in there. No. Expert or not, at that age, that's very rough country. You know, and the fact that everything disappeared. Yeah. Listen, if there was a body in there, within two or three days, it would be gone. The coyotes would have destroyed it. All right, so our, what? There's, it's, this area is rampant with coyotes. So a lot of coyotes, and what about you know bears, there's, mountain there's lions? Black, black bear. Encon says there's no mountain lions. I personally have seen a mountain lion in this area. There's got to be one or two. So I know they're here. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. I know other people that have seen him, so I know they're here. Yeah. So his body would but not have remained there. It doesn't matter. Mountain lion grabs you up, takes you up into a tree. There's going to be some blood. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're going to find something. They're going to find a, a scuffle mark. Yeah. And it's not going to eat your back. And his backpack would, yeah, his gun. Be, there's like, going to be clothes. There's going to be gun. There's going to be, why didn't, if he's lost in there, he's an expert on surviving in the wild. Why didn't he shoot his gun? Yeah. After three hours of his guys not finding him, why didn't he shoot his yep. gun? Yep. That was one thing that was in the documentary that I was curious about, because we're, we're not hunters, but I, I do shoot, target shooting. Yeah. Um, I was always taught never to fire a gun into the air. Is that is it true that people three, will three fire shots. three shots into the air? Three shots, yes. All right. Three, three shots is like the universal warning yeah. sign, and you know, I need help. Got it, and is it, but is it like into the air or is it into the dirt? It, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, it's just three shots. Tree. Gotcha. You know, most people that I used to hunt with, if they were in a situation like that, they put three shots into a tree. Makes sense. You're still going to hear the report of the rifle. Yeah, I mean, so that, that there's, was another thing we were talking about. There's still going to be casings laying around. Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe he picked the casings up. Where's his foot tracks? How come the leaves aren't disturbed where they said they left him? Right. You know? Yeah, no, and, none of, and nothing about this makes sense. For, for another fact, you don't take an 82-year-old man in the woods and say, just walk down this road alone half a mile by yourself and you'll see a rock on the right and mm -hmm. you stay there and we'll come and get you in an hour mm -hmm. you know watch this hillside you don't do that mm -hmm. interesting yeah. that, that was there was one last thing that i was curious about because we went in there and uh the the, the documentary says that and, and the reports say that they were all spaced 100 yards apart so i went 100 yards in and spoke conversationally to him 100 yards away and he could hear me talking just like this absolutely so how about how far do you and think a, a, a gunshot gun. would a, a travel? A gunshot, somebody could shoot a gun up there and you would probably hear the report here. All right, so yeah, so like I said, there's absolutely I, no I mean, way. you think about it, it's wide open lake all the way down through. Yep. You're gonna you're gonna hear the report somewhere. Yeah. Yep. What, uh, do you just, you know, whether or not you have a concrete answer to this, how, long, or how far do you think you would be able to hear somebody conversationally or just like yelling in the woods? Because I mean, obviously it's, you know, if it's, then, then again, you got to take into consideration he is deaf in one ear. Yeah. He's eighty something years old, so his voice isn't what it used to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, a couple hundred, three, four, five hundred yards, yeah. a thousand yeah. yards. But even still, that's well yeah. within the bounds. And you of think where about it. Were. This time of year, you hear less distance in the woods because all the leaves are blocking sound. Yeah. Right. In the fall up here, the only trees that have leaves left on them are beech trees. Yeah. And then you got your evergreens, mm -hmm. your fir, fir trees that still have needles on them. Everything else is bare in the fall during hunt season up here. Yep. Yeah, yeah. it's 
man. And just in terms of, you know, simplicity of being able to contact someone and like, you know, connect with them. Also, you know, because everything's so bare, you're gonna be able to see way further into the woods. You know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, in November, they probably wouldn't be able to see each other. Yeah. Listen, well, probably not time, him because of his eyes. But here in the dense forest up here, you can see from here to that stone building. Oh wow! Through the woods. Oh wow! And that's a good what, like that, six hundred yards, maybe? Maybe not that far. It's probably two hundred yards, but yeah. looks it's like few, about two football it's, fields it's to me. Two hundred yards. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, personally, I don't think he was ever in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd, you'd find some sign of him. Yeah. Some right. place where... Okay, once again, he's an outdoor survivalist. He's a hunter. When you go hunting, I don't know if either one of you guys have ever hunted, and you're on watch, first thing you do is this. Nothing there. So you're not standing on crunchy leaves. Right. And if you want to adjust your weight... Yeah, I think they said they left him noise. sitting on a stump with his bag next to him. His bag wasn't on him, so... According to them, if his bag was not on his back, if even if a mountain lion or a, a bear did get him, mm. it wouldn't take his bag. Yeah. Listen, listen also, they, they took searchers in there from me to you apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sticks on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't find anything. And day after day after day after day, yeah. till it came to the point of, you know, we've covered more of an area than he could have possibly traveled. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, after two days, the temperatures that time of year. He had no chance. Yeah. This is, this is starting to sound a hell of a lot more like a true crime case and a lot less like a paranormal night, thing. He would have had a fire. Yeah. This is, what month was it he came up missing? It was November 15th. Cold. Yep. Cold in the Adirondacks in November. You're talking mm -hmm. 30s. 30s. Yeah, I, I, went to, to I went to school teens, at Penn State up in the Appalachians. Yeah. Same he would have started a fire. Yeah. You know, if at all possible. I would assume he would have had matches or some kind of flint on him. If he was as trained as he as he was, he, there's no way yeah. that he would have been up there without at least matches. And then right. to your point with how thorough the search was, we were talking about in terms of like that clearing for when you're hunting. So you're right. When you, when you go hunting, I'm telling you, yeah. every hunter out there mm -hmm. does this. Get the leaves out so you're standing on soft, wet dirt. Yeah, right. so you're not making any sound for if anything comes by. Right, because you're not just going to stand and not adjust your weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so they would have found that marking at the very least. Even if it's right in the middle of the roadway, yeah. he's going to clear a spot to stand in. Yeah. Sitting on a stump, in November he's not going to stay sitting on that stump. Yeah. He yeah. also probably would have eaten something, which, I mean, he probably would have put the wrapper back in his bag, but they didn't find the bag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So, no bag, no gun, no, no tracks. Yeah. No yeah. tracks, no sign of him. I don't believe he's ever there. Yeah. I, I think it's a, an entire cover-up by the people he was hunting with. Mm -hmm. And if the story is true that his brother came up missing 10 years prior, like I'm- In I'm that same spot. I was told it was 10 years prior to the same week. Really? If that story Weird as is hell. true, and he was hunting with the same people in the same situation, never found, mm. where's his brother? Yeah, that's- yeah, that's really weird. Oh, good questions. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, Rich. 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 Aiden, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Also Aiden. <laughs> yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Caden. Caden? Yeah. Oh, that, that's Kaden? great. Oh, there we go. <laughs> On fame. There it is. Nice. Yeah. So, like, what you're saying is, like, 20 years ago, the State Forest Service sealed off a bunch of graphite mines on the other side of the mountains. Yes. There was, there was one main entrance... A bunch of them are flooded. Like mm -hmm. when I was a kid, we used to go in there and toboggan in July. Because <laughs> the floors just glare ice once you get down in there under, yeah. you know, once you're mm -hmm. 50 feet underground. Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole different world. But like, no, people were going in there and like, you know, your local weed growers go in there and get free back on all by the buckets <laughs> loaded. Yeah. You know, so they sealed them off to protect the bats. Because mm. at the time, all the bats were starting to get that white nose disease uh, that they were getting. Right. So they wanted to keep people away from them, don't disturb them, let them hibernate, let them breed, you know. But Makes sense. Again, if, if you have to know where that main entrance is to get into any of those caves, yeah. any of those mines, you know, and mm. there's not a ton of people left. I mean, and they're too far to have brought him in there. Like, there's no way that... You can drive from me to the water from the main entrance and not even know it's there if you don't gotcha. know it's there. Mm. Interesting. That's wild. The whole thing is just so weird. It's such a weird case.
So I, I guess my, my question for you would be like, what what do you remember about it? Also, um, real quick, what was your name? Sorry. Nate. Nate. Nate West. Okay. Yeah. Nate West. Okay. Yeah. So what, like, what do you remember about it? Um, it was hunting season, right? So it was November fifteenth, twenty fifteen. Um, there was a group of guys that were going hunting. Mm -hmm. They walked out. Old guy. He was like 82. 82 was on drive. Mm -hmm. They walked into the woods. They went to the spot where they were going to meet up, mm -hmm. and they just never showed up. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, the story you guys have heard, but that's, yeah. that's what we heard. But then, yeah, they searched for days. Yeah. No, no nothing. They brought cadaver dogs. They, they searched, mm -hmm. like, they did grids where they were, like, three feet apart and mm -hmm. walked the whole entire perimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so all those guys were in here, you know, getting lunch and stuff on the way and chatting about it. Yeah. But, yeah, they just searched and searched with really, I mean, zero evidence. In, yeah, in, in the woods. It, it's very odd. They, there's nothing. They didn't find a single thing. None of his. Nothing. Not his not bag. Not his gun. Clothing, not his not hat. His gun. Not a hat. No, no walkie-talkie. Boot. So weird. Do you remember anything that they might have said while they were? Was there anything that stuck out? Yeah. Um, not really. It was just surprised at how many how many people were out there looking for him. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and I, I guess just that they didn't. He just disappeared into thin air. Was yeah, the crazy thing. Funny. it's the name of the show. Yeah, right. <laughs> this, oh, yeah. this program yeah, right. is going to be called oh. Into Thin Air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so they didn't come back with any leads or exactly. any, like nothing really, and then it was just like, well, what happened to the family? How did how how did he disappear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the family's not from around here, from no, what we understand, no, from they Troy. Were just in, yeah, just in town hunting. Yeah, uh, and it, I think they, I don't know if they had a camp or like a hunting lodge around or something. From what I remember uh, from from the story that. The, the, the mainstream story of this is that they had a they set up camp on the lake, uh -huh. uh, and then they decided they wanted to drive down Lily Pond Road and hunt down there because they hadn't done it before. And they were there from 10 a.m. to I think they said 2:30 or 3:30. About that, yeah. They filed the report at 4:30 p.m. and then searched until 7 when it started to get dark. Yeah. Uh, there was they said they never fired, they, they never heard the three shots that you're supposed to fire. Are, are you a hunter at all? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, have you hunted this area? Sure. Not has, Lily Pond. Yeah, but you know, just the general area. You yeah. Know, has, is there any, uh, have you ever experienced, one of the things that they talked about was that the forest was unusually quiet, that they didn't see any game, they didn't hear anything, there were no birds chirping. Have you ever experienced something like that? I mean, not really that stuck out in my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in the woods a lot. Yeah. You know, that. there's quiet times. There's, Usually it's like you're in the woods and you think you hear something and it's a squirrel and it sounds loud. But, yeah. yeah. Um, well, not really. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a strange, strange mm -hmm. thing. Are you from the area originally? Or? Uh, a little bit south of here. A little yeah. south? You know, nice. yeah. Queensbury. I grew up in Queensbury, but we've got, got a camp over on Moon Lake. We've got gotcha. our family forever. So. Nice. Yeah. We're, we're up here from the Philadelphia area. Oh, yeah. cool. So it's, really? Yeah, yeah it's road trip beautiful up, nice. up here. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. Oh, my God. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's we were talking about it on the drive. It's just it's incredible how like something so mysterious can happen in such a beautiful place. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, you don't have to go very far in the woods to get turned around. You know, yeah. you could go 50 yards in one direction and just turn around and, and, and you don't not know where on a real trail, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 It happens that well on if you ever read any books about the AT, you know, people all the time just like wander off trail and just disappear. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some crazy stories. Yeah. Oh, they oh, settled yeah. an argument for us here. Yeah. Not not between us, between us and one of our friends from oh, Tennessee. Yes, yes, yes. yes. How, how do you pronounce that that mountain range, the one that's south of this one, the AT, the the AT mountain range? Oh, which uh, uh, the Appalachians? Appalachians? We're yeah. See, that's the question. Oh, Appalachian or we, Appalachian? Yeah, we I yeah. think I, I we get I so much Appalachian, flack for it. I probably just say Appalachian. Yeah, we always we've always said Appalachian. Yeah. Appalachian. One of our buddies who's from Tennessee yeah. said we sounded like feds, yeah. and it's Appalachia. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a southern dialect. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was like, I think it's just the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, I was gonna like, say it seems like above or below the Mason Dixon changes. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. yeah, that's funny. But yeah, that's the. I mean, that that goes right in line with what we heard from Rich and Caden. Is yeah. you know, it's the, there was no real explanation. Have you heard any like? Or, are there any rumors that you've heard about like you know? Theories and what people around town believe happened I mean, to him. Of course, there's aliens. But the aliens one, of course, happen. probably not yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Or the fact that maybe he never even was there. That's what Rich said the too. Other one, right? Yeah. Because yeah. he didn't walk far. Exactly, and they, they would have found something. Yeah. 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 It's like who was it? Um, a couple of years ago, a guy disappeared on Whiteface mm -hmm. skiing, but then they found him like two weeks later in California. Like he just 
disappear. We've talked about that case too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Guys were on, uh, Guy who shows up in California with a haircut and his goggles still on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Go figure. Yeah, it's. Right? That, that's that's basically what the show is about. Yeah. Is we we talk about all of those different cases, and so cool. this is this has been a fun experience for us getting up here and getting to talk to people who live in these places yeah. and who experienced it, lived through it, all of that. Yeah, it's been fascinating. And, oh yeah, uh, you know, hundred percent. But, yeah, but so, yeah, I can't believe they didn't find anything. anything. Yeah, like nothing. Nothing you know? at all. Yeah. So. If I had known that New York was as far away as New York actually is, I might not have planned to go to New York. Yeah, I mean, well, there was a reason why I bought the earplugs, because I kind of had a feeling that, you know, on a long drive, my car's fun, but it gets old. Well, it wasn't really the drive, the, the, the noise that was the problem. It was the five hours in the car, in a car that gets three miles to the gallon. Yeah. You just had to go for something that takes the 93 octane. I mean, the wub wub. The wub wub. The wub wub. And I'll, am I wrong? I mean, it's, no, it's fun. I understand the wub wub. I'm just not sure the utility of the wub wub was what it needed to be. To be fair, I filled up out here. Uh, when was that? When did I get back from the shore? Thursday, or no, Tuesday morning. And went back to Maniunk up here, still on F. Still on F. Still on F. Well, uh, I mean, press it to pay respects, I suppose. It's, when, when you don't go above, like, 1,000 RPM, and you just coast as much as you can, it's not bad. <laughs> when you use the car as a go-kart, <laughs> it works. Yes. Well, I, you save gas. See, mine goes over 1,000 RPM if I touch the gas pedal, so... Um, well, when you're going, uh... 30 miles an hour in sixth gear. And what about when you need to get onto Lily Pond Road, which has an immediate incline and it's um, dirt? Muscle cars are not meant to have jacked suspension, so... So what you're saying is we, we should have taken the Jeep. Yeah, but for, like, brand consistency, my car makes I, sense. Yeah, I, you, you're really focused on the brand consistency here, aren't you? It's what I do for a living. You realize we're both marketing professionals, right? Yeah, I know. Okay, as, as long as we're clear on that. Yeah. All right. But, I will say, despite not being able to get onto Lily Pond Road, I kind of think we nailed it a little bit with the interviews. Oh, the interviews, totally. Like, uh, you know, because yeah. the fact of the matter is, I don't know that we would have thought to go get those interviews if it weren't for the fact that we couldn't get down Lily Pond Road, which means we never would have gotten that level of local, like, yeah. what, what words am I looking for here? Uh, know how? You know, knowledge. Or, or just knowledge. context. You know what's more important? Knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. I'm but, sorry, I like my Lamborghini bookshelf. <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> Is that all you remember from that video? Lamborghini bookshelf and knowledge? <laughs> you assume I ever watched the original video. I don't think I have either. I've just seen the vines. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so what, what really caught me off guard, caught me by surprise, was the degree to which people were so certain of their theories. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, the, the one guy we talked to in, in the general store, uh, what was his name, Rich? Which, well, there were two stores. The older guy in the general store. Uh, oh, they were both general stores. Yes. Right, we were in upstate New York. Yes. The one in town. Yeah, without uh, the ice cream. I believe that was Rich. I believe it was name. I believe his name was Rich. He, so. Yeah, it was just it. You know, from watching the documentaries and reading the stories on other blogs, and I understand that almost all of this comes from Politis's work. So ours was probably one of the first, not one of the first, but you know, our, ours is not based on Politis. We no. took the same case, but totally different approach. Yeah, looked into the weather. Looked into. Uh, the, the geography, we ran off into the woods to see how far you could actually hear sound from. Mm -hmm. Turns out the answer is quite far. Going into it, I was expecting more conspiracy in terms of the cover-up on the police end. Mm. And I feel like what we got was conspiracy as in cover-up on the David Politis and the, um, the family end. And having watched David's stuff, having looked into it, not just the movies, but also the YouTube content on the Canon uh, Missing Channel. I get the sense that that Politis is is an honest guy. 
hmm? that he might have some out there theories as far as some people are concerned. You know, I can't really say that Bigfoot's out there when... And he's also never directly alluded to Bigfoot. He's just made it clear that he's open to the possibility of something paranormal being involved. And since we kind of take that same tack, I, and I know that you and I are honest people, I, I want to believe that David Politis is an honest guy. Um, but the possibility that the family were not being honest is what caught me. And I wasn't able to find the documentary Rich mentioned where I, the, the wife of where Tom's wife was interviewed and he said that she didn't seem very remorseful, that his kids don't seem very remorseful. Um, at the same time, I also can't find a ton of evidence that he had money or anything of any significant amount, I and mean, maybe property, but I didn't see a motive for them to do something to him, so I don't really know. I'm, I'm not sure what to think on it. I think that the, uh, the suggestion that there was an accident that was being covered up might be the most reasonable. I don't think them accidentally shooting him is the accident, but I do wonder, did he fall? Was somebody responsible for something? Did somebody accidentally knock him over and, and he just went? You know, I, I don't know what to think on that end, so I, I guess the, the possibility is still there. By no means was it ruled out that he actually was there and disappeared, but there also is the possibility that he was never there. Uh, I was not able to find any evidence that his brother disappeared 10 years earlier, as was mentioned, but... If that does come to light, obviously that would be interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, just the fact that uh, from everything that we've heard about the story, anything you've told me or any of the research I've done on my own, which, to be fair, not extensive, but, or at least not in comparison to the amount that you've done, but the idea that he was never there was, and this isn't necessarily meant to seem hyperbolic, because in many ways it was, rather shocking. Yeah. Because the story goes... He went missing up by Lily Pond. Mm -hmm. That's why we went up there. Yeah. The idea that he was never there is a very interesting take. And specifically because, like, I mean, there are, like you said, options that would make sense in terms of maybe an accident happened that got covered up. I would, you know, I wouldn't cross out the, you know, misfire of a firearm or, you know, for some reason crossing, mm -hmm. crossing line of sight, accident, accidental discharge. That happened. They didn't want to deal with the manslaughter charge. They hit him. Like, you remember being up there, your foot went how far into that? Mud? Uh, the mud is actually still on my boot. I can feel it up to here, yeah. so. And that was just you walking around in a place that wasn't yeah, that, near the I mean, that's that's a solid probably six inches. Yeah. That my foot went into the mud. Um, and that's no real attempt. That's also nowhere near the actual pond. Yeah. I would imagine if it's anything like Northeastern PA, which it is, but even more amplified, it's probably some solid bogs around that pond as well. Well, on top of that, he Rich mentioned that there was an old sawmill. That mm. there's a sawdust pile that is so old and, and rotted that if you were to fall in there, you know, you, you wouldn't get out. Yeah. So I think that's also a possibility. Um, in, in my opinion, if Rich is completely correct about everything he told us, for example, the... Uh, the part where the searchers that he knew that went, and I'm, I'm disappointed that we weren't able to speak to anybody involved in the search, but what he said was there was no disturbance where Tom supposedly was and that any hunter would have brushed everything out of the way. I think that's fascinating. If Rich is right about everything he told us, I do think it's most likely Tom was never there. But that brings up another question, which is why did the state police, the state forest service, and the FBI all refused to talk to me. I reached out to every single one of them two, three weeks before we went on the trip, and the only person who spoke to me was the county sheriff. And remind me what exactly he said. Uh, I was a lieutenant with the, with the sheriff's office. But the gist of it was he doesn't remember much. He was involved in a few days of the search. They would gather at the firehouse, be put under the direction of one of the rangers. So it was the rangers who were actually in charge. Uh, in conjunction with the state police, because both are state level agencies. And essentially what he said was that the way that everything was set up with the bump lines and all that was that each ranger would get a team, that ranger would direct the team, and then everything was kind of in general overseen by the Forest Service and the state police. And that he, he what he said was that they searched, it was an extremely thorough search. But he does not recall anything odd outside of the fact that Tom was missing. 
He said that the forest was as chattery as it usually is. He said that there was no odd feeling on the air, that nobody else went missing during the search. There haven't been any other strange disappearances. There's no pattern. So whatever did happen to Tom seems pretty isolated. And I, I think that's odd, but I can't, I can't get past the part where nobody at the state level would talk to us. Because that, that seems strange to me. If their conclusion from this was, he's just missing, you'd think that somebody would have at least commented. Because I couldn't get interviews, I couldn't get phone calls, I couldn't even get an official statement from any of these groups. They just all declined to comment. And I mean, like, maybe that's a policy that they have, but at the same time, it's not hard to just, in a one sentence or two, just essentially say, oh yeah, the, the missing person's case, no concrete evidence of this, 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 or whatever has existed, case is cold but still open, or yeah. the case has been closed due to whatever. Case is open. Then why not just say, missing person, open case, no leads? Instead it was, nobody's willing to talk. So in my opinion, I, I'm definitely not leaning towards the supernatural it, nearly as much as I was before we went up there. Yeah. The more I've learned about the case, the more I'm thinking foul play. Hmm. That's not necessarily better, but it is different. It is. Arguably more interesting. Yeah, because if there's a human element, then it's not just a random disappearance. It's There's a mystery there. There's an actual mystery, and there's perhaps more work to be done. I certainly wouldn't be against it. It's a nice drive, despite the money. <laughs> so what you're saying is our problem is that we're poor. Correct. <laughs> well, if we get the funding, maybe we take another trip. I began. I mean, hey, we both loved it up there. And That's true. It was nice up there. It was gorgeous up there. And we were treated like, you know, we, we, were, we were like, we were a special occasion. We were outsiders. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It was fun. And they were nice people. They were very nice people. Very nice people. Next time, let's stay at that little, like, white, uh, you remember that white uh, bed and breakfast looking building yeah. that was on the lake? Oh, yeah. I'm um, waking up there. I agree. All right. On to the next one. Sounds good to me.